He's entertained millions of fans worldwide. He's crushed over six tons of cars at countless events. He's raced hundreds of miles over endless amounts of dirt and wrecked more truck parts than any other competitor. And he's won more races than any other driver in the history of the sport, launching himself into the world spotlight as one of the biggest monster truck drivers of all time. He is six-time world champion, Tom Mentz. a young boy from a small rural town in central Illinois go from simply dreaming about the awesome power of these amazing machines. I used to go to the grocery store and buy the magazines that had like monster trucks in them when they were first coming along. I thought, man, that'd be cool to have one of those. To actually becoming one of the world's biggest monster truck superstars. Ladies and gentlemen, the monster truck champion of the world from Paxton, Illinois, Tom Get ready to see the story behind some of the biggest and longest running rivalries in the sport of monster truck racing. He's there to be number one, and I'm there to be number one. I'd always heard, you know, you can't beat him in freestyle. There's no way you can beat Grave Digger in freestyle, you know. And I remember that night going out there and just driving the truck, you know, literally over my head and over the ability of the equipment to withstand that kind of punishment. Witness all of the excruciating heartache. It was a struggle to pay every bill for, for years. A normal human being would have, would have said, there, there's no way I can go on. And catch a never before seen glimpse of all the drama and sacrifice it took for one man to become a living legend. He's going wild! But I ain't stopping here. Two runs, two wins, we're top. And Goldberg up on two wheels, can he hold it? What a great race, maximum destruction and grave digger! I went from a little kid to winning at the Astrodome. So dream big, woo! Our story begins in the small town of Paxton, Illinois, where Tom was born and raised. A quiet kind of place where children had to make their own fun, and Tom was great at keeping busy. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, I was maybe a little bit in trouble, not too bad though. Just ran around a lot. Really liked, you know, messing with bicycles and building ramps. That's one of my favorite things to do. He would be the kid that was riding his bike off ramps, you'd see, and things like that. That kid, you know, that always doing something like that. When Tom was a kid, he was. Uh, a real uh, daredevil, you know, on his bikes and all this stuff, but as, as a normal young man would do. Tom's early interest in mechanics grew thanks to his father, Bill Mentz, and cousin, Richard Sebring. Yeah, my dad was a mechanic, you know, for almost all his life, and, you know, he used to help me repair stuff and get stuff ready and taught me a lot about how to work on vehicles and, you know, motorcycles and bicycles. We always had tools at the house, so that was real helpful. Him and his dad were together a lot. Then they'd work together every evening out in the garage. So they had a lot of time together. I got further along in life, you know, and I started thinking about driving more, and I got a little older. I, I really got excited about four-wheel drive trucks and used to stop and take pictures of them on the street and hold on to them. And my cousin, he had a four-wheel drive truck, and he started putting bigger tires on it and jacking it up and stuff, and that really was you know, what all started the four-wheel drive craze for me. My mom and dad, you know, when I was getting older and ready to drive, I was about 13, he actually bought a four-wheel drive pickup, you know, and that was gonna be my truck when I turned 16, and we had to get it all ready to go, you know, it needed a lot of work, and to put different lift kits on it, and bigger tires, and I'd sit out in the garage at night and jack the truck up on a jack to see what it would look like if it was taller, and. Just crazy stuff like that, you know, I always had a passion for that stuff. He was 16, and uh, I loaned him a roll bar, and he brought it back bent. He'd already wrecked his first truck. Well, that truck, the first day I got my license, you know, I was really excited and got to drive it, and it was so cool, I finally got to drive it. You know, I've been working on this thing for like four years, actually, getting it ready and dreaming about the day when I could drive this big four-wheel drive truck. And, Three days after I got my license, I rolled the truck over and told it. He was always going down the mud roads. I don't know how many times he wrecked, but that was kind of a 
thing in high school was, well, Mintz wrecked his truck last night, or Mintz put it in a ditch last night. So he was always trying to, you know, do something faster and jump something, or even back then. There wasn't anything that he wasn't on top of, or under, or in. And one day we were going down Main Street, and he pulls up in front of the police station. And I knew what he was going to do. And he revved it up, dumped the clutch, spun the tires, and dropped the drive shaft on the ground. The police never even came out of the police station. They just stuck their finger out the door and waved him on in. And they brought him into the police station, chewed his butt, told him not to do it again, which of course he did the next day. And he was just always doing stuff like that. He, if he could get attention from somebody, and not in a bad way, just to, just to get attention, he would do it. High school football would become another one of Tom's main passions as a young man growing up in a small town in central Illinois. Actually watching my cousin as he grew up and his team was so good and getting to see them and see everybody cheer for him and the crowd get behind him, it was really cool. It, did, it just put a lot of influence on me and the whole community kind of rallied behind him when they did so well. As a player, he was outstanding. In fact, we used to grade all of our football players, our linemen, every game. And if they graded out somewhere between 75 and 80, that was excellent. We were a winning football team. For the first five games, Tom graded out between 91 and 95, both on offense and defense. It was the heck with Tom. We're not going to waste the time grading him anymore. Tom's competitive spirit would take him farther than anyone on his team or in his town could dream possible. This never-die attitude would become well-known in his future career as a monster truck driver. You know, my junior year, we were okay. We had uh, a lot of juniors on the field, not very many seniors. We only had like three seniors, you know, but that made us that much better because we got to work that whole year. We won some games. I remember beating Gibson City the last game of the year. That was our big rival, and there was like no way we were going to beat them because they had a really good team that year, but somehow we were able to pull it out and win that last game. That was really special. The year we went to the state finals, Tom's senior year, it was 1984. We were coming off a pretty average 3-6 and six year. Nobody expected much of us. We went through and won six straight games, and then we made the playoffs as an at-large team in 2A. Yeah, we were in the playoffs, and we went way further in the playoffs than what anybody thought. And we made it all the way to the final game. We played that at Bloomington Normal College. You know, that's where the state championships games were held in. They had pep rallies, you know. Everybody got really excited. That's all everybody in this town was talking about. That's all you saw here in town. Everybody had sheets with things out in front of their house, hanging on their porches. You know, everybody's cars had things on them. And then we played Amboy in the state championship, and they beat us 16 to 7. But it was really, really a wonderful year. And we actually lost that game. It was a, it was a good game, but we lost out narrowly. So it was just kind of a, kind of a disappointing end to a great career. Even through the success of Tom's high school football career, his passion for four-wheel trucks still thrived. And with the help of his cousin, he would soon have the chance to finally get a taste of running a real live monster truck all his own. Yeah, ever since I was a young kid, and I can remember being like 10 years old, and I used to go to the grocery store and buy the magazines that had like monster trucks in them when they were first coming along with the big tires and how they were jacking them up. And I really thought, man, that'd be cool to have one of those. My cousin, you know, he was kind of into four wheel drives, and he was like, man, one day he was like wanting to build a monster truck, you know, and have around on the farm. I was like, man, I, I was like, I'll help you any way I can, you know. So we started you know, putting it together and we ended up buying an old junked out four-wheel drive Oshkosh truck and spent a lot of time converting that into our monster truck with no money at all. We actually nicknamed it Cheap Foot in the beginning. That was his nickname of it. Yeah, the reason we named it for the Cheap Foot was uh, no money. And we had parts, a lot of Ford parts laying around and started putting things together off combines and Ford pick -em up trucks. and trying to make it go. We always had trucks with big tires and stuff and the big tires sitting around and thought, well, let's give it a whirl and we had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, that was definitely the first taste of monster truck. And I mean, it was a full size, it had the 66s. You know, it was all there. It didn't have rear steering, but you know, you could drive it and you can kind of get that feel looking down. It was great. 
After the end of his high school football career, Tom began searching for another outlet to keep that competitive spirit alive. You know, back when we started messing around with all these four-wheel drives, we didn't really know what to do, and we, we messed with this monster truck, and like always wanting to go to more competitions, and didn't really know where to go with it. Well, I heard about a small mud race over in Hoopston, Illinois, at the Sweet Corn Festival near the end of the year, and I was like, man, I'd really like to go try that, you know, with my four-wheel drive as a mud drag. I was like, cool. So I went over there, and I remember getting like two first place and a, and a second, and right there I was hooked. You know, that was my way to compete again. Everybody always says if you ever win a race, you're hooked for life, and I think that's true. Winning those small races proved only to fuel his competitive passion even further. A small taste of all the success to come. Soon, Tom would be on his way to building his first ever competition vehicle. Well, after that first September mud drag when, you know, I had so much fun doing it, I decided to build something a little better, you know, like just having a competition vehicle. I mean, I spent tons of hours building these things and used every dime I could squander from my job and anything I could come up with and get for free from somebody else or whatever to make this thing go. Tom soon realized that pursuing his interest in racing would come with a hefty price tag. And in order to follow his dream, he and his family would have to make many personal and financial sacrifices. Almost every part we used had to come out of a junkyard or off of something, used tires, used wheels, a rebuilt motor, but you know, it was all rewarding to be able to see, you know, some of the, the fruits of your labor, it was neat. Even back then when we were dating, he was working on mud cars. So he would work on his mud car every night. We wouldn't even, see each other. We'd go out about once a week to dinner or something like that, but the rest of the time was he was working on his car. I met my wife, you know, actually we went to school together, same high school. We didn't really know one another. We did, but, you know, we were never interested in one another until quite some time after school. We'd been out of school for like four years, and, and, and then we kind of met again, I guess you could say. He kept talking about how he needed somebody to cook for him on the road. And mom said, well, my daughter's a good cook, my daughter's a good cook. So he actually called me and asked if I wanted to go with him to Indianapolis for a race. So, but I didn't go. Reconnecting with his childhood friend and future wife, Debbie, wasn't the only positive thing happening in Tom's life at that time. His racing career was taking off as well. Tom's long hours, hard work, and total dedication started to pay off when he got an opportunity to travel to Pittsburgh to compete in a race that would be broadcast on ESPN, giving Tom a shot at showing the world what he could do. They had ESPN there, and that was so important to me, you know? I was like, holy cow, you know, I'd seen these things on TV, I'm like, Man, I could be on TV. It was crazy. Being driven by Tom Mintz out of Paxton, nice. Illinois, a supercharged Chevrolet nice. Big Lock. This thing has been incredible in preliminary action, Shelly. I was like, man, this is your one chance, you know? If you ain't gonna win, at least do something spectacular, you know? So I thought, well, no matter what happens, I'm not gonna let out of it, you know? 1,500 horsepower of Chevrolet. And I come out of the end of the pit and got sideways and it flipped over into the net, you know, and it was just crazy. Well, it happened so fast I didn't really have time to react, so it just, uh, I knew I was safe inside the car, so there wasn't nothing to worry about. People were cheering, you know. Not very many people rolled things over back then, so it was kind of a really neat deal for me. And then, actually, after that, they were kind of calling me then. <laughs> after the first race when he was on TV, I remember when he called, I couldn't understand half of what he was saying because he was talking so fast and so loud that I just knew that whatever had happened, he was okay and he had a really good time. That's all I remember about it. Tom had proven to a nationally televised audience what a young man from Paxton, Illinois was capable of, opening many doors and enabling him to travel all over the country to compete in national events, sanctioned by the U.S. Hot Rod Association. This success would push Tom even further. It was neat, you know, to move up to that level, go to all these different cities, went all the way to California mud racing, and started to do okay with it, you know, and starting to be able to pay my bills for the machinery. Here is a young man who has put together literally one of the most astounding vehicles we have ever witnessed. A three and a tremendous 
tremendous pass, and that will easily be good enough for the number one spot. Shelly, that's what Tom Mims wanted to do. I remember when he started winning in Shake Me, his old mud car, and he was probably the top in his sport in that, and it was exciting. And he raced, started racing all over the country, and he'd always call midnight, two o'clock in the morning. I go, what are you doing calling me? I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm driving, and I haven't been asleep for 20 hours. Would you talk to me for a while? I'm going to talk to you, all right. I'm going to use some words you ain't never heard before, but I'd talk to him. But it, I still worked, you know, every day I could. I, I'd get home late. I, I'd come into work late, you know, because I'd just, just arrive. I, I remember driving the tow vehicle right to work and just getting out, brushing my teeth, and going in and punching in to make it on time. He would leave sometimes on a Thursday night, Friday morning, if he could get the day off work. Be gone all weekend, mud racing. Come home. I might see him at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock for a half hour. He'd go to bed and get up and go to work. Tom's success and hard work did not go unnoticed. He soon met racing circuit veteran Paul Schaefer, owner and operator of the hugely popular mud race car, Mud Patrol. Okay, I used to compete at a lot of different mud races. I actually got to meet Paul Schaefer, who was running the Mud Patrol at the time, and you know, seemed like a great guy. And, and I remember him having his monster truck at a show in Kansas City for USA. And he had a lot of breakdowns that weekend. We did really well. We actually won all three days mud racing. He had his monster truck there, and he was having a lot of trouble. And he didn't have very many crew guys, so we were helping him keeping it going, you know, and just, you know, that. Uh, which do that everywhere, but kind of started a little friendship there. I think we met at a special event, outdoor show, uh, Bud Racer, Bud Show. Uh, I raced all over the country in the, in the Bud cars, and, and he did too. And he talked about, you know, building another monster truck and possibly having me drive it. You know, he wanted to further his empire, I guess, so to speak, and get more trucks and more notoriety for him. And I was still mud racing, doing really well at it. And he got to the point where his monster truck was going to different events than his mud car. Tom was probably the fastest guy there on a low budget uh, deal, you know, and I thought if he had a little money behind him, he'd go fast, and he did. You know, we, we put a little money into his car, we sponsored him, and, and he did great. Then he drove my car, and we jockeyed back and forth. In 94, I drove the mud patrol, and he drove the mud patrol indoors and out, and, and uh, I just didn't have time. Then we built a brand new truck, and then uh, I put him into my own. Monster Patrol. It was this friendship that would ultimately lead to Tom's first chance at his boyhood dream, driving a monster truck competitively. And you know, he really wanted to go and you know have another truck. And he said, you know, he talked to me about it. He's like, Tom, why don't we put another truck together? You know, build me a new one, and then you could drive the old one. You know, if it, if the new one's better, you know, because we didn't know if we could build a good new one. That's kind of where I started driving monster trucks. Well, he was a good guy, and I figured I could put him in a truck and he could drive it. His uh, the Bud Patrol was fast, and uh, he had a lot of experience. He drove for many years in the Shake Me, and uh, he was good. Determined to make the most of it, Tom Mens poured all of his passion and determination into this new opportunity. Another huge step on the long, hard journey into becoming a monster truck legend. He spent weeks away from home. He would drive up to Portage, Indiana, and stay there for a day or two and come home. That was hard to have him gone that long. We had a lot of hard times then, financially, and just to get him started. He worked in the junkyard every day, cutting iron. He worked there, and then we worked at night on a, on a monster truck and mud car. And all. He drove about so two hours a day, back and forth. Tom was ready to fulfill yet another dream. And unsurprisingly, Mentz proved to be a natural competitor, born to drive the very machines he worked so hard to create. Tom had found his destiny. my first event in the Monster Patrol truck was in Thompson Speedway in Connecticut. And you know, I'd never raced a truck before. I drove the old farm truck around, you know, that monster truck, and it pulled up on some cars. And as always, you know, we were running behind and, you know, getting the truck ready and got out there. I didn't have much practice at all in it. But, you know, it was almost like it came to me naturally. I've been driving one since I was like 10 years old in my mind. 
and I went there and was able to run really good. Yeah, we took him up there in Thompson Speedway. He drove in the backyard a little bit, and I took him up there, and I told him, go over the first set of cars, lift, get back in it, make sure you're straight, drive hard. He went over the first set of cars, never lifted, hit the second set of cars, never lifted, about blew the motor up, and then about, about went crazy. I remember the first night that he was drove a monster truck. When he called me after the show, he said, this is what I'm going to do. And he was really adamant about this is where he was going with everything. Given the chance to continue driving Monster Patrol, Tom Mintz put everything he had into every performance. I think what was next is, is to get, get to be a better driver, you know. Could be the race of the night coming up right here. Give it up for Tom Mintz! To be able to compete at these events and win them, you know, that's what I wanted to do, you know. Paul did a great job, and I just wanted to take it to a new level, and I really wanted to take the Monster Patrol truck full circle and make it a top competitor on the tour. I think he, I think he was crazy, you know, and, and, and he wasn't worried about crashing, and, and he hammered down. He had a, like a light switch. He was flat on the floor or not, you know, and if he rolled, he rolled. He was determined more than ever to give the fans the most spectacular show each time he got behind the wheel. And some of the biggest names in the sport of monster truck racing were beginning to take notice. Going against Tom when he was in Monster Patrol, he was tough to beat. The truck was always kind of lightweight. What is left for him to tear down? It was fast. He loves to get at it. Same design that he's got right now that he still runs, and um, he was tough. He was tough to beat, and he was out there to beat me every chance that he got. He won a lot of races. The first time I went against uh, Tom Mintz was in Pueblo, Colorado. He was thrashing on his truck, and that was the only thing that got my attention going his way. I still didn't even know him for a few years after this, but I'd, uh, I loaned him a set of used engine bearings. And those boys had the oil pan tore off that thing. They were packing junk up in their crank, trying to get this thing going again. And, um, I honestly can't remember if we ran. He may have even won the race that night. I was able to beat Dennis Anderson, Gravedigger, racing in the Monster Patrol truck. That was like a big point for me. I was like so excited. You know, it was a long track. Had some good drivers there. It was two sets of cars. Got huge air at all the U.S. Hot Rod shows even back then. Tom will always remember the very first time he ever experienced the awesome freedom of freestyle in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was a big event for me, it was a stadium, one of the first stadiums I ever drove a monster truck in that I would be able to, you know, maybe further my career. And I remember going out there and competing and I got out in freestyle and I actually was just having a blast, you know. I'd never been able to just go out there and drive with no set course or system you had to compete on. You could just go anywhere and do anything. He cool to do it, you know, I had a lot of fun, I just was getting some big air, I went down there and did an awesome donut, man, so many other drivers were complimenting me on the way I drove, I couldn't believe I drove so wild, and so many of them, of them had never seen anybody do a donut that fast, it was actually one of the first hyperspace speedy cyclone donuts. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Mintz, Monster Patrol! Hey man, what a ride! Yeah, I'm just going to beat on this thing and beat on it all night. I think I pretty well got it tore up. The days when Tom drove Monster Patrol, he put Monster Patrol on the map. He came out romping and stomping with that truck. He used to do the most ballistic, biggest uh, cyclone donuts. He had the wing on it. He would do the wing walk. Tom had that appeal that, you know, to, to the fans that he was there to satisfy that he wanted to be the best. He wanted to be the best driver. He wanted to have the most cheers. He wanted everybody to like him the most. Then he tried really hard and it worked really good for him because he put, he put that old Monster Patrol on the map. After a long success with Monster Patrol, Tom Mentz was ready to take on new challenges. And with that came an offer from the U.S. Hot Rod Association. Yeah, I wanted, you know, an opportunity to get away from Paul Schaefer and kind of be more on my own and do more of my own thing. So. With the help of the United States Hot Rod Association, they had the bulldozer body, and we wanted to make that into an opportunity to run the bulldozer truck and be more on my own. It was a great opportunity for me. Mint, as he's said to us before the show, he's been watching Motor Madness all year. It's killing him he hasn't been on television. 
he's ready to show everybody he belongs there tonight. And it was, it was a great feeling for me because I hadn't been on the TV series that year in Monster Jam. They run a whole series. They've been running since January 1st. They've already done about five different cities. And I hadn't been on those TV shows. So in 99, I went to Orlando with the Bulldozer and was able to debut it there in front of about 50,000 people. And I was a little nervous, but I was definitely ready. I wanted to show them that I belong there. How do you like that? First time out, first time there, it is Bulldozer. I remember racing uh, Monster Patrol with Paul Schaefer driving, Barefoot with Todd Frolic, Grave Digger with Dennis Anderson. In 1999, Tom debuted Bulldozer. Bulldozer had been on the circuit, but he debuted it with Tom driving. And he came out to the track and he spanked my butt in the finals. We're in the final run here of the semifinals. Wide turn by Dennis, that hurt you. What a great turn by Tom Bent and Bulldozer. Living up to the top. I tell you what, I've been sitting home watching this. I've been seeing these guys win. I've been sitting there saying, I can do this. I know I can do it. That felt great. I'll tell you what, when I come around that corner and seen him behind me, I thought, yeah. I'll give it to him. He raced hard. He had some fast times, but I did break a ring in pinion, so don't forget that time when you see this. A lot of great trucks that night. You know, anybody could have won, and it was definitely my night to win. I think I had maybe just a little bit of a chip on my shoulder to show them all that I belong there. This thing's running good and we're having fun. That's the best part about it. What a way to debut. That was the turning point where maybe he didn't start making the name for himself when the first time he drove Bulldozer, but that's when he knew he could make a name for himself. I think that's when he started pushing. He knew he could beat the big boys. He knew he could be a big boy. Tom's spectacular debut in Orlando propelled him into an even brighter national spotlight proving he was well on his way to becoming a top competitor in the sport of monster truck racing. I had a great time in a bulldozer truck back in 99. You know, I ran it for the rest of the year after Orlando. It was really good to me. I had a lot of great performances. I got to go up against all the heavy hitters all year, and I really enjoyed that. I remember going to St. Louis and doing a great job there and, and seeing Dennis Anderson capture you know, the championship that year in Grave Digger. I wasn't able to compete on the whole series that year, so it was kind of like I was able, you know, kind of sold myself a little short that year by not being able to compete on that series. He also managed to catch the interest of professional wrestler Bill Goldberg. The next big window in Tom's career began to open. And later in the fall, WCW was wanting to get involved in monster trucks through United States Hot Rod Association and directly had association with Bill Goldberg. So it was able for me to have a huge window to begin to open. Running the Goldberg truck was one of the biggest steps in Tom's career. Gone were the days of searching for parts in scrapyards. This was the first time he had the support and backing to run his own truck. A huge opportunity for Tom Mentz and his crew. It was cool to have a big name sponsor like that on the side of your truck. you know, connect and build a whole new chassis, new truck for the first time, my own very new piece of equipment. So it was like a huge headache, but at the same time, it was like a huge opportunity. Unfortunately, the chance to run the Goldberg truck also meant taking on new and more time-consuming responsibilities that would soon enough take a toll on his professional and personal life. Okay, this truck, we, we finally got everything done on it, and the agreement was made really kind of last minute. We had a lot of stuff we had to put together, a lot of pieces we had to put in place. They had a whole new body design that nobody had ever seen before. It was a completely one-off body. And then through some association I had with Ray Diskin on building fiberglass parts for me for my other trucks, he stepped to the plate and said that he could pull it off in time to have the body ready to debut for the first show. The amazing part about the whole thing was it was so last minute. It was right at the holidays. The truck had a debut in January. I remember when we were building that truck, it was every day, every night. There wasn't a night that he came in before 1 a.m., not, not one. I remember him working through, he had the flu and could barely get up out of bed. And he still had to go out there at seven o'clock in the morning and build the truck and get the truck going and test the truck. And it was hard. 
And everybody kept counting down the days because there weren't very many left. I can remember being Christmas Day and actually testing the truck in, in the back of my house. Just the body was in primer and we just got it started so we took it out and beat it up pretty good testing it. Tom would soon find out if all the hard work and sacrifice would pay off at the debut of the new Goldberg truck in Atlanta, Georgia. Home of Bill Goldberg and 50,000 monster truck fans, all waiting to be thrilled by this brand new futuristic SUV. Well, you know, I had this huge name deal. I was going to go down there and be with Bill Goldberg. He was going to be there live. I don't know. They're, they're opening the door. Oh, oh my God. I don't believe it. It's Goldberg! Atlanta is like it definitely, I mean, it is his home, but on top of that, calls started coming in that the show was going to be sold out. It was going to be jam-packed. It was an incredible amount of pressure, you know, I had to go down there and not only have the truck run all the way through the night, but it could compete against the best drivers on the U.S. Hot Rod Tour. Just bought me a dragster last week. Got a lot of bikes, but I was missing one thing in my collection. So, tonight, here it is. There it is, the Goldberg Monster Truck. The first night he was going to debut Goldberg, he was very nervous. He was nervous for weeks before that, because he knew it was coming up. He knew everybody would be there. He knew once those lights turned off and he cranked that engine, all eyes were on him. And if it went bad, they weren't going to blame Bill Goldberg and they weren't going to blame anybody but Tom Mint. Greatest monster truck drivers from Atlanta, Tom Mint and Goldberg. I find and I found the most able driver there is. Who's next? I couldn't have said it any better myself. So it all came together that night, and you know, fortunately, right out of the box, the truck ran great. We won the event, we tore some stuff up in the race, but we won the race. Tonight's racing champion, Tom Mintz Goldberg. And it cut the freestyle kind of short, but we had a spectacular rollover to kind of make the whole night come together and, and gained a ton of fans the first night. I'll tell you what, that's exactly what we expected to do. We didn't work seven weeks, work our tails off. Everybody I know, everybody I didn't know helped. I don't know what to say. We did what we set out to come out here to do, and we did it. When he called me from Atlanta that night, he was exhausted. I think he was in a quiet stage. He wasn't excited. I think it had taken everything he had, knowing that all those people were there, everybody was watching him. He called and said, we did it. So many months of heartache, so many people here helping to two, three in the morning trying to get this thing done. It looked like an impossible deadline at times. Thought we were gonna have to call the debut off, didn't think we'd have it ready, but it's such a relief when you can get everything together and be out there ripping around in front of 60,000 people and still holding together, it was awesome. After a spectacular debut, there was no stopping Tom Mentz in the Goldberg truck during that season. The success was everything Tom Mentz could have hoped for at that point in his career. Tonight's racing champion, Tom Mentz Goldberg! You know, we're winning now, we just need to quit, keep on winning. Bill Goldberg had an incredible record winning in wrestling. It was almost like the truck just followed suit and it wanted to win everywhere. Wow, the horsepower from Goldberg and oh, that's the sick air right there. Tom Mintz and Goldberg through the air. Oh, is he gonna save it yet? Oh, 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 what a finish! I was actually running my whole deal then. I had to make all the decisions. It was like you ran with no looking back, no holding back, just wide open. That flag in the back of your truck doesn't seem to weigh you down. I'm telling you, I ain't letting it worry me. I'm going to take that flag all the way to Las Vegas. The first year Tom drove the Goldberg truck was also the first year the United States Hot Rod Association launched the event that would soon become the premier monster truck competition on the planet, the Monster Jam World Finals. We had so much success through the winter of 2000.
and we were getting ready to go to Las Vegas. And at that time, it was a whole new deal. You know, we'd never done Las Vegas before. They made that into the World Finals, which meant 16 trucks. It was going to be on pay-per-view. Bill Goldberg was there to watch on. The greatest night, the biggest event in the history of this sport, if your truck and your driver can make it to number one. You got it. I have more than confidence in him. He's got the ability. And he sure as hell got it in his eyes, man. It was an unbelievable event that unfolded. Goldberg is flying again. Goldberg in the lead down the pace straightaway. Can he get it turned? He does. Goldberg's got it. Goldberg wins the World Finals. The night that he won first World Championship in Las Vegas, I was so proud I was in tears. Because I knew he'd made it. We were able to win and walk out of there with the victory. It was great. I can't say enough for everybody back home that helped us win this trophy. All the fans out there supported us. Goldberg, Goldberg Racing, my dad, everybody, man. The list goes on and on. Coming off the success of the World Finals, Tom's business grew, enabling him to take control of many more aspects of his burgeoning career. The Goldberg truck was becoming you know, immensely popular. A lot of people were following it. And we had a calling to build another one so we could book more shows, keep more people happy. It was just getting successful. We had to keep going and get more of a mission going. So we built another Goldberg truck and we built the high roller truck in that fall. You know, now we're gonna campaign four trucks. You know, we had to now hire drivers and hire more people to man these vehicles and keep them running. What a year he's having behind the wheel of that Goldberg monster truck. Not only had Tom proved that he was a masterful driver, but with the support of his family and crew, he became a great businessman as well. Tom felt it was once again time to take the next big step. Tom was hard to keep up with because he was switching from Monster Patrol to Bulldozer to Goldberg. He wanted people to recognize him as the driver and not follow the truck as much. I was looking for my own identity. I had Goldberg's name on the side of the truck, you know. And here I was the owner and the business, you know, man, and making all the decisions on where it went and how to run it. It just, you know, seemed like it'd be more satisfying for me to be able to have my own name on the truck and do my own thing totally. I was already doing my own thing, but I wasn't getting all the credit. Soon after parting ways with the Goldberg sponsorship, another huge opportunity was to unfold. Another chance to excel in Tom's search for his own identity in the world of monster truck racing. Bill Goldberg's name was gone. It was the first time anybody tried to debut the name of a driver on a truck. I think that's real important for this sport. I think it was more the star to win drivers' names were starting to become bigger than the actual names of trucks. It used to be the other way around. Everybody talked about the name of the truck, not necessarily the name of the driver. Instead of Bill Goldberg's face being on top of the truck, it was my face. And, you know, I did not want to come out and do any worse than I did before because I knew everybody was watching me to see how I could do totally on my own. Tom was finally beginning to gain the recognition he had always dreamed of. The fans that came out knew a lot more who drove trucks. You know, they were talking to me, they called me by my name. It was kind of cool for me to be you know, able to see some of the fruits of my labor really coming all the way around. As the World Finals approached, the pressure to perform was immense. Tom knew he and the rest of the world would accept nothing less than another double championship. We were you know, running the team men's truck all year. We came back to Vegas, you know, and we had won back-to-back -back titles in the Goldberg truck the year before. Here they come. It's close, but it's Goldberg, the world champion. Blue Thunder rolls it over. The track was one way, then the track was another way. And Lyle lost, and then he won, and then, hey, like I said, we won again, and it's great. So, man, there was not anything out there that could have happened at Vegas that I would have been satisfied with if I would not have got a double win in the team men's truck. Now we're ready for these two to go down Thunder Alley. Here they come. You're focused on Tom Pitt, the world champ. Can he hang on and do it again? Boy, look at Mitch down that straightaway. Scotty's so strong in the turn. It's very smooth. It's close. But Tom Pitt has won the world championship one more time. How about it? Sideways over the bus. Oh, oh, goodness. And over on his lid. 
He's done it. 37. He's done it, yeah. He's done it again. 37 we have on new world champion Tom Vince defending the title for World Finals 3. Unbelievable. These fans are the best in the world. They come out here. I give it all I have. My hands off to all the other drivers. To be able to show everybody that I made that transformation from Goldberg to my own total control. So that's what it took that year. You know, I was definitely a marked man. Everybody out there could care less about anything else. They just want to make sure that I didn't win again. So nobody's really had that pressure to carry before. And, you know, believe it or not, it was tough. Soon after his double grab victory, another huge change lay ahead for champion Tom Mentz. This Hot Rod Association came up with a new paint scheme they had had in their office for a while. And it was a wild paint scheme, and we needed to come up with a name for it, and I thought it would be a good fit for me, you know, to fit that body. And, you know, the name Maximum Destruction was struck up, and it just seemed like it actually told the whole story about me and the way I drive. The truck, you know, basically, it's just like all the rest of monster trucks as far as it's got 66-inch tall tires. This truck's unusual, has the motor in the front. There's not too many front-engine trucks out here anymore, and it's a left-side drive. I sit on the left side. It's a little bit different. Most guys are sitting in the center now. I've always sat over there. I really like it like that. It's got a 520 Chevrolet engine in it, built by my dad. It runs an API power glide transmission with two speeds, a 12-inch transfer case, and uh, that's about it, I guess. Before his truck's latest metamorphosis was to take place, Tom set out on one final mission to make history in the very last monster truck event in the history of one of the world's premier venues, the Astrodome. Not only was it going to be the last show in the Astrodome, it was going to be the last show for me and Team Mintz. And I had a huge point to prove to everybody out there that, you know, I really want to be the last one to win in that building. Give it up for your winner! You know, that building had a lot of history of monster trucks way before I ever came around. And I was able to go out there and perform that night and get a double win, which that's tough to do anywhere anymore. Oh, look at the air! For Tom Oh, he's going the other way! Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Tom Mintz and Team Man! But with that field of competitors and trucks. It was really special for me to close the chapter on the monster truck history in the Astrodome with two wins. Like I said earlier, all you kids sitting in the grandstands, if you're going to dream, dream big. That's what I did. I went from a little kid to winning at the Astrodome. So dream big. Woo! After the powerful debuts of the various trucks Tom's driven over the years, the anticipation of the maximum destruction truck ran high, and Tom Mentz did not disappoint. In 2003, when I went to debut the Maximum Destruction Truck. Ladies and gentlemen, the Monster Truck Champion of the World from Maximum Destruction and Maximum Destruction. There was huge pressure once again. Good crowd. I'd always done really good up there all the way back to Monster Control. I had a lot of great shows there. Maximum Destruction. We were able to take the truck to win again in a debut. So that meant that every truck ever debuted, I was able to win in. It's really special for me. After a spectacular debut in Houston, Tom proved to be unstoppable for another year, proving once again it didn't matter what truck he drove, he was born to drive. I had a great year in 2003 with Maximum Destruction. The whole year went great. I was able to win a lot of different places and win freestyles. And the neat thing about not only winning a freestyle is, I mean, that's cool, but it's even better when you can really win the crowd over in freestyle. We had an awesome year that year, all the way up until Las Vegas. This has been the stopping grounds of Tom Benson at Maximum Destruction. Came into World Finals 4 that year, just ready to do really well. And then we had some problems. We didn't do so well in racing. Tom Mintz in the turn, almost overturns it. Gunslinger may get it, though. Gunslinger got it. We had some problems there. 
and got down to freestyle and thought, okay, well, let's come back and do really well in the freestyle. Here comes maximum destruction right off the bat. That is not what he wanted to do. But you know what it finally got to us. We had so much success there in six championships to that point, we've won five of them. You know, and sooner or later, you know, the Gremlins were going to creep in. They creeped in that year. The World Finals, Tom is fast on that track. He's good on those turns. His vehicle works good on, his, on those tracks. The last couple of years, he's skipped up, and, and he didn't win the World Finals. But Tom had a lot of pressure on him, and I could see it. I could tell he had a lot of pressure on him. He got trying too hard, running his equipment too long not getting the proper maintenance sometimes. I think Tom now is starting to come back around. So uh, it's, uh, Tom is gonna be tough forever. Tom knew in order to gain the respect and recognition he wanted to achieve, he would have to meet his ultimate competitor head on. Tom Mentz and Dennis Anderson's rivalry continues to be the biggest in monster truck racing and elevating the sport to where it is today. The rivalry between me and Tom is, is what it is. They're even in the turn. What a great race. The first turn, and look at the power. Tom Mintz. Tom, hats off to you, man. He tore up some equipment. Here they come. Maximum destruction and grave digger. He's there to be number one, and I'm there to be number one. I was there before he was, so I'm not going to give up. That's what keeps us going so hard. I'm probably closer to Tom now in the last couple of years than I was when he first came out because I thought he was a little arrogant and I thought he was a little cocky. I'm the man. I'm going to prove it right now. I ain't got no thought at all. I'm going to put down another great run. He's the one that's going to be worried. But then once you got to know him, all that was just Tom. He wasn't actually trying to be that cocky and be that arrogant. That's just how he's, that's just how he comes off. You know, as I came up through the monster truck ranks, you know, a lot of people told me early on in my career that you just couldn't beat Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger in freestyle. There was no way. He was too popular. He drove too wild. I like to think that you know, a lot of times as I come up and started beating him, it wasn't that he was having trouble. It's just I was taking this sport to a new level. So look out. He saved it. He saved it. Well, Tom versus Dennis. You got to put them two on the same level. Look what they've taken this sport to today. If it wasn't for the rival between them, they elevate the show. I mean, from Dennis to Tom, and the rest of us see this. They see them guys giving 110%. That makes us do a little harder. We're not going to give it to them. We're not going to let them go out there and just win the freestyle. They got to earn it. Dennis has been the king of freestyle for forever. And now Tom's trying to take that away from them. And Tom has always been real good at racing. They had, their, they had their place. Tom had racing, Dennis had freestyle. Now they're switching around. Dennis is still the, the favorite in freestyle, but Tom's pulling off some stuff that Dennis can't seem to get done with his truck. You know, and then they're battling it out for freestyle. Tom pulled the rabbit out of the hat tonight, buddy Rowe. That was the best one I've seen him do in a while. I know I changed the face of this sport through my performances. And he's had to come back up to my level now. Tom has always been a, he's always been a tough competitor with me. And the day I step off the track, I bet Tom's gonna be, he's gonna have a little relief, but there's boys right back behind me that are gonna be tough, and they're gonna be nailing on him. Of all of the amazing achievements accomplished in his lifetime, there is one of which Tom Mentz is most proud, his daughter, Hannah. The thing I'm the most proud of is um, him as a father. He's an excellent father, even though he's gone all the time. Oh, I love being a father. I mean, it's so cool. I mean, I've had thousands of people cheer for me at the end of a night. You know, all of them tell me how great I am. But, you know, nothing makes me feel better when I open that door and come in the house and hear her go, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. You know, that's an awesome feeling. He's, he's a kid like she is. You know, and when it's time to play, he plays. He gets down. The other night, they were riding four-wheelers through a big mud hole together. Me and Hannah, we like to go for rides on the four-wheeler. She loves to do that with Daddy, as long as he don't get to showing off too much with her on there. She really enjoys that, and I like to ride my BMC chopper a lot. You know, I like to rip that thing around town and, and just not have a, you know, a schedule. You know, so often when I'm traveling, everything has to be done by a certain time. I have to be at the building at a certain time, autographs at a certain time. It's really cool to just, 
you know, have a day when you don't have a time frame and a schedule, just to kick back and relax and say, you know what, I'll just go for a ride on my chopper or, or hang out, you know, and just go visit some people and spend time with my wife and little Hannah, it's great. When he's on the track and he does, uh, uh, he does things to make people uh, get their money's worth when they come to watch him. But around here, he just, he just Tom Mintz, he's just hanging around and visiting with his friends and you see him, he waves to you uptown, he's just, just a nice guy, he really is. I mean, I didn't dream, maybe everybody else did, that he'd get where he is now driving monster trucks. I knew he was interested. I said earlier, he started out a little bit quiet and shy. Now I watch him be an interview on TV, and I can't believe it's Tom, because he just comes out and speaks out, and he's pumped up. We love you. We can't wait to see you again. Woo! We're really proud of him when you go outside of our town and see home with Tom Mintz, world champion monster truck driver. That just explains how the whole town feels about him and his family. His heart is in racing, you know, his heart is in the Boston trucks. He gave 100%, you know, and, and that's what it takes in this sport. You give 100%, work 16, 17 hours a day, and then go on, you know. He'll live up to his standards. He'll keep the bar up high, as um, long as we can keep him out of a wheelchair. Tom's competitive. He'll be, he'll be right on top until the day he walks away from the sport. Well, the future for Tom is everybody catching up to the level he's driving. I mean, he's running his stuff to the, to the ragged edge every weekend. His success is a, it's a wonderful thing. Tom is honestly a good guy. He's a little arrogant, he's a little cocky around the collar every once in a while, but down, down deep, he's a good-hearted dude, and uh, his success, I'm proud of him. He started from nothing, and he's come a long ways. He's a popular dude, and he's a damn good driver. From growing up a young boy simply dreaming about the awesome power of monster trucks to becoming one of the world's top drivers, all of the chances taken and all of the countless hours poured into his dream have proven the road to success has been hard fought by Tom Mentz. All the hard work that we've put in for 11 years now, it's paying off more for Tom than me. He can, he can come walking into the house now and say, this is why I've been working so hard. This is why I spent all those hours out in the shed. This is why I'm gone all the time. He has something that shows him. When he comes driving down the street, he can look at the house, and he has his own semi now. You know, that's, that's his. I think he, he, he can see it now. This is why he did what he did. To this day, Tom Mentz's monster truck legacy is still rapidly expanding. Not only does he own four monster trucks of his own, but he also runs a crew of several others to drive them. And Tom himself keeps up a rigorous schedule, performing up to 43 weekends out of each year. Tom Mentz has impacted the sport of monster truck racing to a degree few will ever achieve. From his wicked freestyling to his over-the-top racing, Tom Mentz will never quit striving to be the best. I'm very proud of the impact I've had on the sport. You know, I've made my name known to everybody. I've burned it in the dirt in a lot of different stadiums. You know, I've carved it in the walls, and they definitely know who I am in this sport. It's a great feeling. You know, looking back to when me and my wife, we sacrificed everything. We lived in a little bitty old rundown house just so we could have a shop to work on all these monster trucks. And to see this dream become a reality has been awesome.